Well, cool. Alrighty. Um, oh, go ahead and look at the car. Do we want to shoot today? <laughs> Gemstones assemble. What, what are we assembling? Are we gonna talk about doublets and triplets today? Maybe. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, uh, we're gonna do a science experiment today. I'm really excited about this. Basically an assembled stone is two or more pieces that are stuck together to form one stone. So in the business, you have doublets and triplets. A doublet is two pieces and a triplet is three pieces. And with a triplet, usually the middle layer is like the layer that gives it color. An actual doublet and triplet, it is so, you know, the material that you're working with, it's so small. You know, they're very delicate pieces. It's not like you have these huge chunks of stones, you know, but right here, this is almost a perfect example. You can see there's a definite top and a definite bottom. Okay, so that to me looks like a doublet. All right, so one of the most common doublet types is garnet and glass doublet. So basically the top is garnet, the bottom is glass, but it is manufactured in a way that the top of the stone, it's kind of like at an angle and then you've got the bottom. So like the top angle is garnet and then the bottom is glass. So when you test a stone on that that table facet, it reads as garnet, but if you were to test it like on one of the pavilion facets, it would read as glass. So when you are in the business and maybe there's something that you see that looks a little funky, or maybe the bottom has more chips on it than the top, you know, glass is less hard than garnet. You know, that's something you're gonna wanna test. You're gonna wanna test the bottom and the top, and you're gonna look for, you know, maybe there are planes where the they could have been glued together, or when you are thinking about doublets and triplets, you need to just be very, very, observant. I remember in gem school, this is one of the more challenging parts. It was one of the more challenging parts for me because I was always concerned I was going to get stumped. So I was always, you know, looking really, really, really hard at the stones. And that's what you should do in business. And we've talked about that before. Opal can be in a doublet or a triplet. So right here, this is an example of an opal doublet. So you can see a very, very thin slice of opal and then that backing. The benefit of that is like if you are my mining a stone and it's a very, very thin stone, you're gonna wanna use that stone. We've talked about on this channel about maximizing your rough. So to maximize the opal rough, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a very thin slice and you're gonna back it because if you don't use that thin slice, the opal is gonna be too delicate and you're not gonna be able to set it or use it in any way. Anyways, I was talking to one of our buyers here at JTV, George, he's a senior buyer, opal expert. And he said that now, you know, in the past when you had opal triplets, they were quartz, but now they're there's this like special optical grade German glass that doesn't allow the material to like lift. So it's a more sturdy look for a triplet. It, it doesn't, you know, sometimes with doubles or triplets, they can kind of break off and that um, this material makes them safer. And with opal, we all know how delicate opal is, you know, that just saves you time and it saves you money because you're not having to worry about what's gonna happen to the stone. All right, so there are a lot of benefits to doublets and triplets and we will do a little science experiment later. There are people that like to buy triplets and doublets. It also helps if material, like we talked about with opal, is not very sturdy. It provides a good simulant. So let's say you don't wanna buy a garnet, a garnet doublet acts as a simulant for garnet. You know, then there are people that use it for deceptive purposes, but that is why on this channel we've talked about you guys always observing everything, um, using your gemological skills, asking questions, you know, just being very detail-oriented. I think that's one of the most important things in this business is to be very detail-oriented and take your time and methodically look at the stones, whether you are in a lab or not. That's just, maybe that's just good life advice, right? All right, so when you are in the business and you were looking for doubles and triplets, there are a few key things you're gonna wanna look for. Number one, do you see bubbles? If you see bubbles, that is a possible sign that the material has been glued together. Do you see a separation plane? So an example of a separation plane, you know, right here, I can see very clearly where the material is put together. Do you see a difference in inclusions? You know, if you have a triplet and it has glass in the center and 
barrel on the outside, the inclusions in glass are gonna look different than the inclusions in barrel or the inclusions in corundum or garnet. You know, so look for stones that maybe the inclusions don't match up. Also, look at the piece and is there a difference between luster on the top and bottom? Is there a difference between wear? As I mentioned earlier with a garnet and glass doublet, the wear on garnet is gonna look a lot different than the wear on glass. I think this is something you should listen to your gut. If you look at something and you see a stone and you say to yourself, huh, that looks a little funky, you could be looking at a doublet or triplet. And maybe that funkiness is a difference in inclusions or a difference in wear or luster. But those are just kind of four basic things that I looked for when I was in gem school and when I've been in the field, when I was trying to determine if the stone I was looking at was a doublet or a triplet or not a doublet or a triplet. All right, so last week I went over to JTV's lab and I was talking to my friend and I told her that we are gonna be doing an episode all about doublets and triplets. So right here, I have a quartz triplet. So you can't see any, oh, you kind of can. Can the camera get that separation plane? I can see that there's a difference between the girdle, which is right here, and then the table and the pavilion. I can see that there's just something funky going on. I can see a f maybe an example of, yeah, you can see a lack of color when you look at it this way. So the color usually comes from that middle layer of the triplet. But anyways, my friend Teresa suggested that there's a really cool way to show triplets and doublets, or triplets. So basically, this is like a, I think it's winter, this is some wintergreen oil. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drop this stone into this vial. And right now, this stone, it looks like a solid green stone, but it's a triplet. So that middle layer is what's giving it color. And the top layer and the bottom layer are probably colorless quartz. It's a quartz triplet, so the top and bottom layer are probably colorless. When I drop this into this vial, you are not gonna see that top layer and bottom layer, and you're just gonna see like coloring the middle part that gives it color. And I just think that's really cool. It has something to do with like the refractive index of the material, ready? Maybe that didn't work out the way I... Oh, okay, so I don't know if you can see this. Okay, so on this piece right here, you can see that the bottom, the pavilion, looks colorless now, and the, I think that's the top, I can't see that very well, and it looks like that top third, the top and middle third where the color is. I can't see exactly where that color is coming from, but it basically looks like the bottom of the stone disappeared. And this is, you know, something that you can use to look for doublets and triplets. And anyways, my friend gave this example as something fun to show on the channel. And I think this is just a cool little science experiment. So yeah, it basically looks like I got half of a stone. Yep, two stones in. It's like this phantom, I don't know, it's like this invisibility cloak, like Harry Potter. And it has something to do with the RI of both materials and it just disappears. And then you can see where it gets its color. Now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. Isn't that neat? For those of you purchasing antique jewelry, fun fact, a garnet and glass doublets were used a lot in antique jewelry. You'll find a lot of those. And I believe that's because back then, maybe that was a more affordable option for jewelry. Now, you know, garnet is so inexpensive. Um, I would be surprised if they're still manufacturing garnet and glass doublets, but just something to keep an eye out for if you are interested in purchasing antique jewelry. All right, guys, I want you to take a closer look at this piece right here. The top half to me looks like a watermelon tourmaline and the bottom half, I am not sure. I would have to test that piece, but I want you to take a closer look at the difference between the top half and the bottom half. And then I want you to take a closer look at the actual jewelry piece. We had this laying around JTV. You know, you, you can't even tell. It's just a really cool way to use more for a whole different product to be used in jewelry. It looks, you know, that just looks like a piece of tourmaline. You know, no one would ever call this a tourmaline. They would say this is a tourmaline doublet or triplet, or this is a doublet or triplet. So just um, something to keep your eye out for. I hope you learned a lot today and I thought this would be a really cool episode and any episode that we get to do a science experiment is always a good episode.
don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell for future episodes, but we will catch you later and comment below and let me know if you find any doubles or triplets in your collection.